ready spaghetti? Oh, yeah, baby. So now I knew I was coming here about a year and a half ago. I started this sketchbook. And of course, you know, because of the place and the time. <clears throat> I thought about Ypres and the history of it. So I got the sketchbook at like a, you know, a scrap place where you can buy like, you know, you reuse materials or like just stuff thing people throw away. And I was thinking of calling it Salvos, the show, you know, like, or like the body of work is like a Salvos, like rapid artillery fire that you would experience like say in World War One. Um, so I thought that was pertinent to Ypres. Nothing about my work is warlike. So it doesn't really fit. Um, and then I, I kind of had some notes for myself as like, sort of rules and I've been writing down, like I've got some addresses and I've been writing down. I really thought this one would be fun to paint. Now showing Peter Paul Rubens, Master of the Baroque, like in a total like traditional sign. I may still do that one, but I don't know. Um, and I'm just writing down like Dutch words that I think are interesting. So I started these collages and I left the, the, the left side blank intentionally so I was gonna use it as my journal while I was here. Um, and then I just started filling them up with these collages, these different types of collages that are all kind of like mostly text-based inspired, but then you get to something like, I thought that was pretty interesting. Like aesthetically that one was working for me. So then I, I moved to this one down there. So like, then I, I tried to like actually like make that happen, but obviously it changed, you know what I mean? In the translation, something changed. And then, um, and I allow for that. Like, I don't really think that like, these are just like studies, right? Like if you're doing a study for like a landscape or like a figurative painting, I think of them as figures. I think of letters as figures or like words are figures. Um, and then like, this one's a good example. Like uh, I wrote Bedelin and anti-spat on that one because I thought that was pretty funny. And I actually put it in the, in the painting itself. But as you can see, the painting kind of changed pretty dramatically. Um, nowhere near where it was when the when the, the concept was founded and I, they don't always work out right like sometimes like I just give it a shot and like a lot of it's sign painting this one was pretty close I decided to do instead of polka dots though it's over there it's, I decided to do instead of polka dot stripes and kind of like but I was I decided to stay pretty true to the image like if you look at that painting like I tried to stay pretty true to the image and it's fun. It's, I found out that like using the borders of the, the sketchbook is good for like, you know, matching colors that I want to use or trying to find the right values. And then, so I've got like a hundred of these. This one, so that one actually, this is probably the first one that I did that really was pretty accurate. So this one, I, I, it stayed pretty accurate. It stayed pretty close to the collage. You know what I mean? Like I didn't deviate too far from it. Yeah. And so that one I consider a success. Like when they like, they come across like totally, mm -hmm. I think of them as a success. Now in the time within the last year and a half, like I've been working on another body of work that I've been doing in oil at home. So I had some other stuff that, kind of generated from that. This one I may still try to paint. I think that one could be pretty good. Um, but I, I started making them larger, like, like, they're just basically text studies. So you see how they, I tried to replicate it as precisely as possible and then added some other stuff. This one, I, I did away with a lot of the text, but like, I wanted to keep that London in the middle. I thought that was pretty good. There's, there's a few more in there, like I didn't really get around to doing, but I started working out of the actual sketchbook. And I thought that was like what I had intended, like initially. So like I was just gonna kind of like had to hard reset after that first week of slash and burn because I was just like freaking out. You know what I mean? What'd you call it? I was stressed. You were stressed out, dude. And so. And these, like, I don't think these are all winners, you know what I mean? Like, I think most of them are kind of garbage. But they're just fun, like, exercise. It's like a, just an exercise. And then... The leaping off point. Yeah, and, like, so, like, I even decided to do some drawing. I was going to go way back, like, do some shit, like, you remember from, like, way back. And then, like, I, I, I did some collages at home that were, like, kind of in this vein that came off pretty good. 
And then there's that one. Hmm. So that's not a that's not a huge leap. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a pretty close definition. I'm instead of using the text here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure and I'm gonna do the stripes to kind of keep the continuity of the body. Yeah. Um, I think they're gonna be thinner stripes, so I think I might do like half inch stripes. Or uh whatever that is in metric. Uh, five like centimeters six centimeters half inch is like a centimeter so this one i thought was really successful like this is probably this is probably my favorite one of the whole series um because it's not colors i'm i'm typically i'm not fond of i'm not really fond of it of the color but i wanted to stay true to the to the to the collage and i think i did a good job and so it's a clean painting. I painted all the, the edges, and it's like yeah, yeah. that. That one will be ready for the fucking varnishing day, bro. The vernissage or whatever. So, if there's any others in here, there's a bunch in here that I I wish I I had kind of gotten to. And see, even that body, like, see that one's like one of that series, right? But look at, I could do that one, that one, that one. They're all in the kind of like same vein, so it's like almost like a body of work in and of itself. But I think that one, I heard this today, I thought that was a really good thing. To, a good thing to hear. It says, the coldest of all comforts is being right. Oof. Brutal. tried it with the oil it works okay it, it's not great you know but this is where those vinyl guys technology comes in real handy you, know, you want to like put that down you get, I'm not going to show you the proprietary secret so you can turn away now um, <laughs> should I turn off? tools harder not smarter wait no smarter not harder that's what it is I'm really excited about this one oh come on just give me an edge of paint would you thank you thanks champ thanks champ oh yeah oh yeah baby see I'm coming back with the white color over here so I'm not too worried about that I'm not gonna go CD on that one. I gotta leave that clear for some tape. So, uh, you like this one? No, I don't, actually. Not yet. Okay. Well, you have feelings about this one of some kind. Feelings? What's where the do, question? Where do ideas come from? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, I mean, I think most ideas are pretty bad. Like, there aren't any good ideas. I don't think there are ideas. Like, I think... I don't really necessarily think everything's b 
been done because I think language is evolving, like the spoken word is evolving and the written word is still evolving. So visually, I don't think all has been spoken for necessarily. But I think the idea of, I think the motive, I think motive is a better word. Like that's what, I like the word motive better than idea. Like if you're motivated by notoriety or you're motivated by success or you're motivated by, by something that's relatively vapid, I don't know how far you're really going to get. I think a lot of it has to do with like letting go of, of your expectations, choosing to have an experience and also just dedicating yourself to the, to the practice of it. Like most of it's failure. Like painting is the best boxing match I've ever been in. You know what I mean? It's like, I only go paint. I, I don't, I don't return to painting because I win every time because I had a good idea and I executed it perfectly. Like I never return to painting for that reason. And so that's not my motive. You know what I mean? My motive isn't, my motive is almost the deterrent. My motive is to be beaten back a little bit. Like I have my physical and spiritual energy that I bring to the practice and painting sometimes just beats me back. And so when I re rally and I come back and I'm willing to re-engage with the substrate, the surface, the medium, the, the colors, whatever, it's just the commitment to step back into the ring. I think a lot of it kind of like unfolds in the work. You know what I mean? Like, um, unfortunately, I still, I shouldn't say it like that. The truth is, like, it's kind of coming back around. It's not so out of vogue anymore. It's not so de mode as the french would say it's you know is it beautiful or not you know i think ultimately like painting is you know i'm painting on canvases here so it's like they're objects intended to be hung on walls that's what they are they're objects of decoration so i mean underneath it all i think that there should be some beauty to the final product you know or the final image the, the what, whatever it is that you're looking at and for most of my practice, it's like, it's just a discipline. It's like, I'm going to go to the studio and I'm going to make dog shit till I don't anymore. And it's like, and when you don't, and I, I seriously, I probably paint, I have no idea, 100, 200 paintings a year, maybe. You know what I mean? Like different sizes, different mediums, different formats, different subject matter, doesn't matter. Um, I probably like one a year, maybe. Like in the 30 years that I've been painting, I think I possess all of the paintings that I like in that time, and there's like five of them. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, that I like, that I think are actually bona fide good paintings, there's like five. <laughs> and I own them. And people want to buy them. And I won't sell them, because I'm still learning from them. I'm still looking at them. It's not even that I'm so much trying to replicate that experience that I had that day. It's just that like, I want to refer to it visually as being like, this is like, it's almost like a high jump, right? Like this is my marker. This is where I'm going. I've gone here. Now let me, can I get there again? Because every time you pick up a paintbrush, it's like a gamble. You don't really know. And you just kind of, I'm just jumping into the fray. You know what I mean? I'm just like, that's like salvos. You know what I mean? I'm just loading the fucking machine gun. Just be like, and seeing what happens, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you like level the playing field and it's all good. The commercial art has taught me a lot about letting go of my ego because you serve others. And so in the service to others and their ideals, their business, their concern, like when I paint signs, it's like I'm working for them and their goals. So I get to be of service, which is the most useful component, but also I get to detach myself from it. I'm not as invested. You know what I mean? Like, it's not about me. At the end of the day, it doesn't end up being about me. For he's gone, you might as well forget him. Walk the streets at night Looking for someone
Thank you.